This problem is from the text Conceptual Dynamics. Specifically, this is review problem 7-18. The problem statement reads, a bicyclist starting from rest on level ground accelerates according to the power curve shown. The cyclist reaches his cruising speed in one minute. If the rider and bike weigh 160 pounds, estimate the cruising speed. Neglect air and rolling resistance. So reading the problem, we try to identify what's given and what's unknown. We're told that the rider and the bike weigh 160 pounds. We're told that the bike starts from rest. We're told that the cyclist reaches his cruising speed in one minute. We're also given this power curve, power versus time, and we want to estimate the cruising speed. We want to estimate the velocity at 60 seconds, at one minute. So having read the problem, we basically understand what's going on. We'll go to the next slide in order to actually perform the solution. I've reiterated what we've been given Thinking about this, um, since we're given information about power, which relates to work, um, it's likely that a work energy approach would be appropriate for this, for this example. So specifically, we can use the work energy principle, which says the initial kinetic energy plus the work done by all forces is equal to the final kinetic energy. In this case, when we use this form of the equation, the work includes the work done by all forces, including conservative forces. In this case, uh, there aren't really any conservative forces uh, doing work. Um, the rider stays on level ground, so uh, the weight doesn't do work. Um, there is no change in potential energy. So this is the form of the equation that we're going to use. Since the biker is initially at rest. His initial kinetic energy is zero. The final kinetic energy, one half mv squared, relates to what we want to find. Um, so we know the weight, hence we know the mass, and we're trying to find the cruising speed, which is v2 in this case. The work, uh, we're not given directly but we can determine it from, from the power curve. Specifically, we know that power is the time rate of change of work. In this case, we're given power and we want to find work, and so we can rearrange this, multiply the dt to the other side, and so that sort of gives us a differential change in work um, but we want the total amount of work done over all 60 seconds, and we find that by performing an integral, you know, summing up all of the differential elements over that time period. We're trying to determine the work done between 0 seconds and 60 seconds. And so we can do that. You know, we don't necessarily have an equation for this curve, for this function, but we can determine the integral graphically as the area under the curve. OK, and so again, we don't necessarily have an exact function for this. And so the way that we're going to have to estimate the total work done, the way that we're going to have to estimate the area under the curve is to sort of um, break it up into geometric shapes that we can calculate the area of. And so this won't be very exact, but it'll be pretty good. So for example, we can, you know, we're doing the integral between 0 and 60, and so we can sort of break this up into triangles and rectangles. And it doesn't give us the exact area, but it'll give us a pretty, pretty good estimate. OK. And so rewriting this over here, so 
the work done between the you know the two time instances between zero and sixty seconds is equal to the kinetic energy one half mv squared, where the mass is the weight divided by the acceleration due to gravity, and the velocity is what we're trying to determine. And so we can approximate this. This first triangle, uh, we find the area one half base times height. So one half the base is 15 seconds. The height is 0.14 horsepower. Then we have this rectangle, base times height. Its base is 15 seconds. Its height is also 0.14 horsepower. We then have this triangle, one half base. Its height, if we subtract the 0.24 and the 0.14, get 0 0.10 horsepower. Move to the next rectangle. The base again, 15 seconds. The height, the height is 0 0.24. This triangle. They all have the same base. In this case, the height, we subtract 0.24 from 0.3 to get 0 0.06. And then the last rectangle, same base and the height is 0.3 horsepower. And so we punch that into our calculators. We get that it is approximately 12 point four five horsepower seconds. In this case, um, on the right hand side, when we do the kinetic energy, we're going to have units in pounds and feet and seconds. So we need to convert these horsepower into different units. If you look in the appendix of the book, you can find this. Um, but one horsepower is equal to approximately 550.22 feet pounds per second. So the horsepower cancel, the seconds cancel, and we're left with approximately 6,850.2 foot pounds. And so that is the, an estimate or approximately how much work is done during those 60 seconds. And so we can then take that and use that to solve for our velocity. OK, so we have we want to solve for the velocity. So we have the work done between those two time instances. That's what this is. Multiply by the 2, divide through by the weight, multiply by the, the constant due to the acceleration due to gravity, and then take the square root of both sides. And that's our expression for calculating the velocity, the cruising speed velocity that we reach after 60 seconds. Plugging in numbers, I have the work done in foot pounds, the acceleration due to gravity is 32.2 feet per second squared, the weight is 160 pounds, the pounds cancel, we'll get feet squared over seconds squared, when we take the square root we'll get feet per second. And if we punch that into our calculator, we get that the cruising speed is approximately 52.5 feet per second. If you want to convert that to miles per hour, that works out to be approximately 35.8 miles per hour. So that brings us to the conclusion of this example.